Good evening to uh, each and every one of you. I'm grateful for uh, an opportunity to uh, be able to share and to be able to think out loud on this, the very first day of Black History Month. Ask that you'll please uh, tag somebody, text somebody, uh, share with somebody. Uh, there's a, a lot going on that uh, I really want to be able to download into you uh, and give uh, prayerfully some uh, directive uh, and some marching orders uh, that I think will be able to help you. Uh, this uh, day of uh, Black History Month, uh, you ought to know uh, just uh, a couple of things. Uh, number one is that um, oh, during Black History Month, we ought not just remember our history, but we ought to be intentional to make history. Secondarily, uh, don't ever forget that even when Black History Month is over, you're still black. And so you can't be limited to just one month out of the year. Uh, those who don't know their history are destined and doomed to repeat it. I want to remind you back in 1962, Martin Luther King Jr founded here in Atlanta, Operation Breadbasket, which was in fact to carve a path for economic equity and parity within our community. This is uh, before he started the Poor People's Campaign. 1969 until 1980, the most radical progressive group to emerge out of our community the Black Panther Party started the free breakfast program in Oakland, California and found it replicated all over the nation, feeding thousands upon thousands of young people. Before they went to school, according to the New York Times in 1970, many of the children who sat at the headquarters of the Black Panther Party had never had breakfast before until this organization stepped up. In the face of uh, COVID-19, one of the backlashes that has been exposed is the pre-existing condition of food insecurity. And we find ourselves buttonholed in it while Republicans grapple as to whether or not a stimulus of $600 is adequate and sufficient. And so our coming tonight on February 1st is around Publix Supermarket. Public Supermarket who is saying to us in no uncertain terms that racism is no longer private, but because of what it is that we've endured over the last four years, racism is Publix. Racism is Publix. What do you mean by that, uh, Pastor? Racism is Publix because racism is the embodiment of public supermarket. January 6th, which will go down in American history as a stained page of infamy, with some 8,000 rebel rousers who were cajoled to come to the Capitol under the premise of a lie that the election had been stolen. They came there and what has just been disclosed in uh, the last couple of days is the main funder for that rally that happened in Washington, D.C. was the heiress of public supermarkets. Her name is Julie Jenkins Ficelli. Julie Jenkins Ficelli is the daughter of the founder of public supermarket, George Jenkins. Whether you realize it or not, most of you who live in the southern ebb of the United States I know that public supermarket is everywhere, particularly in African-American communities. Public supermarkets has 1,260 stores. 1,260 stores. Those of you who live in the north, in the Midwest, or in the, the West Coast may not be familiar, but 1,260 stores Many of them are plugged into urban black and brown centers, the majority of whom are in Florida. And after Florida, 
They're in Georgia, Alabama, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, and Virginia, all densely populated by black and brown communities. Public Supermarket is the largest employee-owned company in the United States. It's the largest public employee-owned company in the United States. The family that started Public Supermarket, I need you to hear this and be mindful of it. The founding family, hear this, the Jenkins family, is the 39th wealthiest family in the country. 39th richest family in the country with an estimated net worth, according to Forbes magazine, at $8.8 .8 billion. Here we are in 2021. And Pastor, I need to know why it is that you are bringing us into this dialogue and into this discussion. Because Public Supermarket, who in the last three days has tried to distance itself from the daughter of the founder, has not yet acknowledged the fact that uh, since 2017, they have made it illegal for employees to wear Black Lives Matter shirts in the store. Public supermarket, you cannot keep your job if you wear a Black Lives Matter t-shirt. In 2017, public supermarket made a uh, donation, a very high one, to Republican contender for the governorship of the state of Florida. He subsequently lost, but he ran his campaign on supporting the NRA. Young people in public supermarkets around Florida did die-ins where they laid out on the floor of the supermarket giving reflection how guns have rippled through our community. And yet Publix now is doing the electric slide backwards trying to take no ownership. Public supermarket, I need you to be mindful of this. Public supermarket, um, which again is in the, the Southern Ebb, Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Alabama, Tennessee, and Virginia, the daughter of the founder, I want you to have this, write it down, gave to the Trump campaign $980,000. Maybe you missed what I just said. The daughter of the founder for the 2020 election gave $980,000 to Trump's campaign. Julie Jenkins for Shelley was the largest contributor to the rally that happened on the Capitol on January the 6th. And yet, they say they have nothing to do with it. I want to offer uh, to you several things. One is I want us to redirect our funds and our resources uh, to not be in uh, support of a company that would promote a lie. The election was not stolen and to try to disrupt the transfer of power is absent of diplomacy and decency. I need you, if you will, uh, to text boycott. You'll text boycott to 84576. I said that you'll please write that on the screen. Help me pass this word along. Text boycott to 84576. I want to give it to you again, please, sir. Please, ma'am. Text boycott to 845 Seven, six. In the backdrop of it, let me take a moment to commend and congratulate on this Black History Month, Rosalind Brewer. Rosalind Brewer, a super bad sister, has just been named the CEO of Walgreens. Rosalind Brewer, a black woman, has been named the CEO of Walgreens. 
So those of you who are in need of your prescription and your medication, and you live in any of the aforementioned states, I ask that you'll redirect your patronage to Wal Walgreens that's being led by a sister. For those of you who are dealing with food insecurity and you do not have many options and you live in the state of Georgia, let me say to you, you never tell people what not to do without telling people what to do. On this coming Saturday, as an alternative, for those of you who are in need of groceries, and Publix is the only available resource at New Birth Missionary Baptist Church, where I am privileged to serve, we are preparing groceries for 8,000 families. For 8,000 families. I don't want anybody dealing with food insecurity and saying, well, I listened to the pastor and now I don't have an option of what it is I'm going to eat. Absolutely not. I'm grateful for Athena Farms. I'm thankful for World Vision. I'm thankful for the black farmers in Georgia who are partnering with New Birth to make this happen. And so 8,000 families, those of you who are within driving distance from 10 a.m. on Saturday morning until I have no more, and I'm believing that that is not going to happen, uh, I want to be able to bless families so that no family is going in need, no family is absence of nutrition, and no child is going to bed hungry. Uh, this Black History Month, I'm thankful unto God. Sir Walter Riley was right. We see further when we stand on the shoulders of giants. And so what it is that New Birth is doing on this Saturday and every Saturday thereafter is carrying on the legacy of what Dr. King started with Operation Breadbasket, what it is that uh, Huey P. Newton and Angela Davis and Fred Hampton rolled out with the Free Breakfast Program. This Black History Month, I don't want to just remember and invoke the names of those who are dead. I want to give support, empowerment, and strength to those who are alive. I am believing that this same model is going to be replicated in churches all over this southern corridor. Uh, churches in uh, Florida, Georgia, Alabama, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, Virginia. This is our chance for the church to stand up. When Dr. King led the Montgomery bus boycott, he did not just tell the people in the community, don't get on the bus, but they started carpools. This was the early precursor to what we now know as Lyft and Uber. And they used everybody's car, everybody's van, every church bus to get people to work, get people to the store, get people to school. We've got to use the same kind of connectivity uh, to strengthen our community, to protect our community, and to serve our community. Again, I want you to text uh, boycott to 84576. Text boycott to 84576. The reality is, is that our last strength, we have shown America we know how to flip states. We have shown America that we know how to elect presidents and senators. Now let us show America. Black people know their economic strength. We know our economic potential. And we know our economic capacity. The reality is, is that we're not waiting for another stock option with GameStop, AMC Theaters, or Read It. But if we ever use our collective economics to shift systems and structures, we will be absolutely unstoppable. Text boycott 84576. Why? Because racism has gone public and so the movement cannot be private. We've got to ring it on the mountaintops. It matters how we are treated. It matters where we spend our money. It matters where we invest. In Publix, because you have gone public by banning young people from wearing Black Lives Matter t-shirts, because uh, you are acting as if you have no idea where Julie Jenkins Forcelli got 
$980,000 to give to the Trump campaign and then gave almost another half million for the rally to tear apart the very fabric of our democracy. Publix, we're asking you not to issue a written apology, but put your money where your mouth is. Invest in the community that has kept you alive. Invest in the community who has, in fact, helped the daughter of your founder give to a group that are conspiracy theorists, but don't deal with the practicality of injustice in this nation. The old Negro spiritual simply said this, if I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or with a song, then my living is not in vain. Racism has gone public, and so the movement cannot go private. Text boycott 84576. Do it right now. Those of you who are in need of groceries, meet me at New Birth Saturday starting at 10 a.m. We are equipped to serve you, to bless you, because when it's family, it's not charity. Have a great night, and I'll see you on the front line.